unusual message into my heart, so I just pray that the Lord would give me grace to be able to communicate it. Uh, because some things are not very easy to communicate because we need more than words. Words only go so far. But there are heavenly realities, heavenly experiences, and I believe we're going to come up short on finding the words to describe some of the feelings that we're going to be having as the Lord touches us with His glory and His love. Some of the feelings we feel as heaven is coming in, heaven begins to touch us more. Uh, the Lord just, just releasing waves. So, you know, I've been experiencing a lot of new things, uh, especially in this last number of months, a lot of new things. Uh, I've experienced greater things than I've ever experienced all the days of my life since I first began to come to know the Lord. And it's just enough to keep you on the edge of your chair. Praise God. <laughs> keep you expecting and believing God for greater, greater things, greater happenings. I have a Jewish friend in California in the Central Coast. Uh, he's in Paso Robles area. And so uh, he was talking to me about a radio program. So I came up with a name for a radio program. It's called, well, it's called Heavenly Happenings. Welcome to Heavenly Happenings where the future comes into the now. Praise God. Yes, so our God is a now God. And so um, a lot of things are going to be happening now. And the more our hearts open to the Spirit of God, the more we press in in prayer and worship, praying in the Spirit, worshiping the Lord, the more that we're going to have those heavenly experiences Amen. now. Yes. The more the glory is going to be touching us. Right. The more the love of the Lord Jesus is going to be filling us up, fuller than we've ever been before. Amen. And heaven Amen. is has already started manifesting. And this is one of the things I want to talk to you about. So this is very, very unusual because this is one of the only times I never have brought my Bible with me. I didn't bring my Bible with me this evening. But I have my Bible in here. And so I'm just going to share some things with you out of the word the Lord has put into my spirit having to do with these testimonies. So there's three testimonies I want to touch on before I get into talking about some recent testimonies of things the Lord has been doing in some of the visitations we've been having. And I've been saying before, I'm pretty much done with the meetings. I'm for visitations of Amen. God. Hallelujah. It's time for heavenly visitations. I don't believe our God wants us to have a meeting. He wants us to have a visitation. Amen. To where we actually literally feel His presence, His love, His glory, Amen. and how He's transforming us yes. into His image from glory to glory. Amen. Moment by moment as we're in the now with Him. And uh, so the first testimony I want to share about has to do with Jacob. In Genesis it said Jacob, one time Jacob lighted upon a certain place. He was walking, he was on a journey. He lighted on a certain place and uh, said it was evening time. He took stones and used those for pillows. Uh, the sun set and he said the heavens opened and he began to see an, a ladder stretching from the earth into the heavens and he saw angels ascending and descending on this ladder. Now there are places that are portals into heaven. There are places in the earth that are special places of portals and gateways into the glory. And so the Holy Spirit helped Jacob find one of those places. And I'm, I'm really desiring some of those places too. But praise God, any of you desiring any of these portals, these, these heavenly places? If you'll just pray in the Spirit and pray with your understanding, with all your heart, if you will worship the Lord and you allow the Holy Spirit to combine the anointing of prayer and the anointing of worship, then the glory in the heavens will begin to manifest. Because I did see an angel in heaven and the angel had a golden bowl in one hand and had a golden harp in the other hand. The golden bowl had the anointing of the prayers of the saints. And then the harp represented the worship of heaven that was going on with the church that's already in heaven and also the angels, the holy angels of God that are in heaven. But this angel took these two things, the golden bowl and this golden harp, and he brought the two together. In other words, he was combining the anointing of prayer and the anointing of worship. And when he brought them together, then there was an anointing for the glory to begin to be manifest. Wow. The wow. glory began to open up. The angel did this uh, right at the door of the tabernacle in the heavens because the tabernacle that Moses made was an exact replica 
of the tabernacle in the heavens because we have natural and spiritual counterparts uh, for everything. But these two anointings begin to open up the glory and when the glory was manifesting, it began to open up the veil into the Holy of Holies. There was no opening. There was no opening into the Holy of Holies. But these two anointings caused the glory to begin to manifest and the glory and power of God creates an opening in, into the Holy of Holies. Praise God. Um, then as Jacob began to have this experience, he thought he was having a dream. This is what it says in Genesis. It wasn't until later that he realized that it was a heavenly happening. It was heaven was literally opening up. And he saw this ladder, and the ladder represented the Lord Jesus in his glory, the Lord Christ Jesus. He is the way from earth into the heavens. He is the way and the truth and the life. He was the ladder that reaches from the earth clear into the heavens. And he shows us how to move from an earthly place into the heavenly place. That we just follow the Lord Jesus, we follow the Holy Spirit. The interesting thing to me was is that Jacob didn't realize that this was real when it was happening. It seemed more like a dream to him. But yet, the heavens were literally opening. There was this ladder and these angels were moving all up and down this ladder. Later, he came to the realization that it was a real experience. There's something really, really unusual about this testimony because it wasn't cut and dry. Uh, but I wanted to share with you as as heaven begins to come in and manifest, that for us, it's going to be, it's not going to be that easy to discern sometimes what, what's going on. Because we're going to be in the natural realm in this earth and in the heavenly realm at the same time. Mm -hmm. Jacob later realized that the heavens did open and he had an encounter with God. He said, of a truth, God was in this place. There's something real unusual. It's like, uh, it's like him being acquainted with this world when he was there in, the, in this certain place. But when the heavens began to manifest, there were things that he was seeing and things he was feeling and things he was experiencing. They were altogether different than anything he's ever seen before or heard before or felt before. And so there's elements of heaven and there's elements of the presence and the glory of God which are going to be brand new for us, hallelujah, as the Lord begins to open up the heavens. And as he makes a way for us to begin to have a heavenly experience with God and begin to move into a heavenly vision. It's one thing to have a vision. It's another thing to step into a vision. Praise God. Step into a vision with God. I believe we're living in times when many of us are going to begin to have these visions of God and we're going to start stepping into the vision. Mm -hmm. and experiencing yeah. Yeah. God in the midst of the vision yeah. to where the vision becomes part of your life and becomes part of your experience yeah. in the Lord. That we're going to start experiencing the Lord on heavenly levels yeah. Yeah. in the glory. Um, but it seemed like a dream to, to Jacob. He didn't realize until later that he was able to kind of go over it and realized that there was something about heaven that was super superimposed over the natural world. Okay, then the next thing I want to share about has to do with Paul when he was caught up into the third heavens. He was caught up into the third heavens and he said he didn't know if he was in his body or out of his body. He said the Lord knew. It didn't really make any difference to him. All he knew was he was in heaven in some place with God. And that's what mattered to him. But there were things about it that seems surreal. I'm going to have to look up that word surreal and kind of go over it, but there were things about it that seemed to be so far away from anything he's ever seen or been able to picture in his imagination or his spirit that it seemed, it seemed unreal, but yet it was very real in the heavens. The next thing I want to share with you about has to do with Peter when he was in prison. Uh, in the book of Acts, uh, he had been captured and put into this prison. And it was a high security area because it said there was a guard on both sides of Paul. He was in high security. He had these chains, but then he had a guard right next to him on each side. 
It was a very high security area. But the saints were interceding and praying for Paul. And because of that, the Lord sent an angel to visit, um, to visit him over there, Peter, to visit him in the prison. Praise God. We need the prayer of the saints. Amen. Yes. When we get in trouble, we need to know we are connected with some yes. saints who know how to pray. Yes. yes. And yes. who won't have to break through because they already have broken through. Right. Yes. Amen. I wanted to share with you for a moment, one of Daniel's secrets was, is that when an emergency occurred, he didn't have to call up a bunch of people and ask them for prayer and, and say we need a breakthrough. He already broke through. Right. He lived in a broke through state. He prayed. He was in touch with the throne in the presence of God morning, noon, and night. He was in touch with God. He was in touch with the throne. And he stayed broken through. And so I want to just encourage you that this we're living in a time when we need to press in in a relationship with God, press in in prayer. We need to make sure that we stay broken through with God, that we're in touch with God. We're in touch with the throne. And we're in a position to hear when the Holy Spirit wants to speak to us. We're prepared. Because we are already broke through. In our prayer life, we don't pray just once in a while, but we pray continuously. We pray in the understanding, we pray in the spirits, but we stay broken through. Praise God. We stay in touch with the throne of God. This is a real key. But then when emergencies come, if you are in touch with God, the Lord brings you into a state of peace in His presence. When you're in a state of peace, you're in a position to hear from the Holy Spirit, to drop some things into you, because even though there may be a turmoil all around you, but inside of you there will be peace in the presence of God, the kingdom of God within, a portal right inside of you opening up into the gateways of heaven. Uh, the, there were interesting things when the angels showed up because the chains fell off, but evidently, the scripture doesn't tell us everything that happened, but evidently the guards that were on both sides of Peter became frozen. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were frozen because you never heard a peep out of them after the angel shows up. And the other thing was all of the chains and all of the locks and everything just fell right off without any effort whatsoever. You know you're in the spirit when you don't have to exert effort and energy. And the more you're in the Spirit, the more you're in the glory, the more you're moving with the works of God, the works He's already created. You're moving. God is really moving and doing the work, and you're moving with Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the more we can move in the glory, the more our experiences is, is that we're going to be in a place of utter peace and a place of power and anointing. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty when you're in a place of the peace of God and the anointing and where the glory of God is manifesting, you're in a place the devil does not understand. He has to get you upset to get you out of the peace of God to attack you. But as long as you're in the peace of God, as long as you're dwelling under the, you know, the shadow of the Almighty, the presence of God, it's anointing, the glory of the Lord, you're safe. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is such a thing as being hid in Christ, but also there is a place of being hid in the glory cloud with God. I'm just going to touch on this for a moment, but in his, uh, Exodus, the Lord told Moses to go stand on this mountain. There's 40 mountain peaks in the Bible, and all of them have spiritual meanings and significance. But some of the mountains that Moses visited were very special places. The Holy Spirit told Moses to stand on this mountain, and from a distance he saw a glory cloud. I'm desiring to see more of those glory clouds of the Lord. I, I believe we're coming to a time and a place where when God does something awesome and the heavens open and he comes and does awesome things, that God is searching for some sons and daughters who are not going to build another denomination or build something out of what God does, but instead they're going to camp around God himself. Amen. And they're going to move with the Lord in the glory. And wherever our God moves, we will move. Hallelujah. Where the Shekinah glory moves, we will move with the Shekinah glory of God. Uh, wherever it takes us, when the Shekinah glory shall be still, we shall be also be still. And we shall camp there and praise and worship God. I believe the church in the future is going to be more mobile than a lot of the church we've known for the last couple of thousand years is going to be mobile because we're literally going to follow the glory cloud of the Lord. A pillar of fire by night, a pillar of cloud by day. A Shekinah glory 
of God that will shine out of us and also will shine from the earth clear up into the heavens. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Yes. And the, for the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Yes. In the King James there, risen upon you. Whew. It's our Heavenly Father's pleasure and delight to release some of His glory through His bride, through His sons and daughters. And then the glory of God is going to consume you. The glory of God is going to cause you to shine, cause your face to shine very brightly with the Shekinah glory of God, an outshining of Christ in us, the hope of glory. And it's going to cause you to be catapulted into new dimensions, new realities, and these are the heavenly realities that I first began to speak about. And I wanted to share that we're living in a time now that the Lord is going to begin to manifest heaven in His presence in greater ways and in new ways than we've ever experienced before. It's already started. Yes. Hallelujah. There's the good news. Yes. It's already started. And I'm going to, by God's grace, just share a few of the heavenly experiences of the Lord. And then just get into a time of personal ministry. Um, when the angel says to Peter, you know, gird himself up and follow him, he gets up and he just walked right out of the prison. And he didn't realize what was really happening until he got out of the prison. That it was real. It seemed like a dream. It seemed surreal. And um, I'm very, very intrigued about these he the heavens opening. The Lord Jesus, when he prayed, it wasn't just a prayer, but I believe it was a prophecy. When he prayed, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I believe that was a prophetic utterance. And it's not a possibility, it's not a maybe, but it's something our God has declared and something he has prophesied that as it is in heaven, this is what he's bringing here. This is what's coming. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. And so angels are going to begin to be releasing more of the treasuries of heaven and bringing it into the hands of the saints, putting it into our lives. And also, behold, your camels are coming. I don't know if I've ever gotten into a message here about the camels. Yeah. Where is, no, have I? Tell you, tell you, I Did you hear me talk no, about camels? Yes. Did you? You didn't? I touched on it? Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> that there are spiritual camels, and these camels are sent out to the bride. How many of you are of the bride? Then those camels will come, and those camels will bring spiritual and natural provisions for the bride. But I talked with a, a, a new friend from Israel. I met him just a few, well, four or five weeks ago. We met together up in um, just south of Arlington. Oh, what is, what is, I'm trying to remember the name of that place there. Uh, but anyway, Mansfield, yeah. We were, we were in a red barn. And so they bring in these ministries there now, and it's just called the Little Red Barn. And so this, I met this, uh, this brother from Israel, this Jewish brother, who's a psalmist. And so I got, we got a chance to meet, and after the meeting, um, I was hurled into the Holy of Holies in the back of the building so we could spend some time together. And, uh, and, and I, we were talking about camels because just, just several blocks from the location where we were, there were some people that have this land and they have this big a house, a bunch of property, and there are two camels walking around on this property. And a friend of mine drove me over there just so I could see the camels. Praise God. And then, so I wouldn't forget, they gave me two camels. They were about two feet tall to take home with me. So I've got two of them in my room with me. Praise God. Um, but I talked with my friend and he said, a uh, camel, he said that there's a special name, Gamil, in Hebrew, and it said that the camel brings the glory of God. In other words, a messenger of heaven that's going to be bringing glory to the bride. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And releasing the glory of the Lord inside the bride. Hallelujah. And so, um, these are exciting times we're living in. But the thing of it is, Peter didn't really realize, somehow he couldn't grasp even when the angel was standing there, he couldn't really grasp how much of heaven was really opening because he could see the prison, but also he could see a whole dimension of heaven opening where the angel walked right in. And so he was seeing in two worlds at the same time. But the heavenly world 
didn't seem completely real to him to where he thought he was just maybe dreaming or something. This phenomena is the thing that I'm trying to communicate this evening. The reason is, is because about four weeks ago I was in Omaha, Nebraska and I spent a week there and there was, uh, after one of the meetings, the glory of God was manifesting in those meetings and a bunch of saints ganged up on me after one of the meetings. There's maybe maybe eight or nine of them and they wanted to pray for me. But this one sister that I've seen before but never really met, you know, in the spirit, she starts having this unusual prophecy for me and she starts talking to me about Peter when he was in prison. That's the scriptures that I've been meditating on and asking God to give me more revelation and insight of how he couldn't know that the heavens were open and the angel was real and all that until after it happened. When he was out of the prison, then he realized everything that he was seeing in sort of like in a dream state from his point of view was literally happening because later he was completely and totally released out of that prison. I've been asking the Holy Spirit questions about the heavens manifesting and about the glory of the Lord. And so he begins to speak to me through this sister there at a meeting in Omaha and, and telling me that I was going to start having these new experiences where the heaven would manifest and in such a way to where it would be like when Peter saw the angel and the heavens open in the prison. Wow. And so I said, okay, thank you, Lord. And he just started speaking to me the very things I had been inquiring of the Lord about, the very scriptures. I had been reading, meditating in those scriptures about Peter in the prison, asking the Holy Spirit a lot of questions. And I just encourage people, ask the Holy Spirit a lot of questions. If you really want some anointed answers, you need to, we need to start asking the Holy Spirit more questions. Because uh, the Lord Jesus declared in the Gospel of John that the Holy Spirit would be a teacher. He would lead and guide us into all truth. He would bring to remembrance again the things Lord Jesus has done and spoken. And, and the Holy Spirit would bring illumination, bring a revelation. And that we, uh, in First John, it says we need not that any man teach us, but we have the Holy Spirit that teaches all things by the anointing. And said, Lord, I want you to teach me things by the anointing of the living God. For I know there are many different dimensions having to do with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And each place you go is a different atmosphere, different people, different things going on in the Spirit. So we need to ask the Holy Spirit for revelation and insight and instruction for each atmosphere and each place where we go. Because they're all different. What would the Lord Jesus do if he was there? How would he move? How would he minister? How, how would he touch lives there? What would he do? What would he speak? This, these are things I've been asking the Holy Spirit for. I've, every single place is completely different. We can go into another end of this house and it'll be a different atmosphere than the one that's right here. There'll be different things in the spiritual realm, in the reality of heaven. There'll be different things. In just another part, we can go outside and just walk a very short distance and it'll be a completely different atmosphere with different spiritual realities there. Because heaven is not far away. Heaven is right here. <laughs> there we go. It's right here in another realm. But it's right here. Just in another dimension. We don't have to go very far in one sense to find heaven. In another sense, we have to go far because we've been spiritually, you know, so distant from heaven and the nature of heaven and our God and the nature of the Lord. But it's fascinating to me about these experiences. But I want to just tell you that uh, you could be almost anywhere and you could be fellowshipping with some, somebody, one or more people in the Lord, and all of a sudden, heaven is going to begin to manifest. There are things that are going to be dropping in. Some things you're going to see, some things you're going to hear, but some things you're just going to feel as heaven is manifesting. And whatever you feel of the nature of God and the power of God while heaven's manifesting will be just as real as anything you can see or anything you can hear because God is moving in it all. Um, just a, just a, not even a week ago, eight, eight days ago, I was up in Arlington with some good friends and we were, we were having a meeting and, um, and there were some old friends there who were intercessors and then there were some new people I don't know. But in that meeting, the glory of God began to manifest. 
In the course of the evening, I ended up prophesying over practically everybody that was in the meeting. But then three of my friends who are intercessors went out on the porch. We were at this apartment complex right across from the Cowboys Stadium where they, they play. And we were in this apartment complex and about 10.30 at night, they're out on the patio area on the porch. And um, they, they did a lot of prayer, their intercessors. They spend a lot of time with the Lord, but also they know each other. They've been kind of knit together in their spirit. And somehow I've been knit together with them because I pray and stuff with them. You know, we, we hang out in the Lord. And anyway, when I, we were having a tremendous, tremendous visitation of God in the meeting, but there was a whole nother meeting on the porch that took place. I went out onto the porch. They had already been out there fellowshipping for maybe an hour from about maybe, maybe 10 to about 11 o'clock. I think I got out there about 11 o'clock. And uh, they were talking, they were praying, they were worshiping. They were in the spirit. They were in the anointing. I just sort of rolled out the door. I was intoxicated. I was already drinking the new wine. And I was feeling gain with no pain. And so I just came out. And I was just sort of staggering around on the porch. And we were all in the same place in the spirit. All of us were drinking the new wine. And we all we just, would just break out in this spontaneous singing in the spirit. And we'd break into the spontaneous praise and worship of the Lord. And I, I do remember hands moving in certain ways, different patterns. Because when I was in Omaha, I ministered a message on heavenly movements of God. And I talked about Catherine Kuhlman. Any of you ever watch any of her videos? Oh, several of you. About that when she would be in the anointing of the Lord, when she would be in a place in her heart with God, and then she did certain movements. Sometimes the power of God would just flow right out of her arms and flow right out of her hand and be like a whole row or a couple of rows of people that would just be slain in the spirit. They, they were standing and then they'd just be falling into the chairs. As she moved her arm, there was a heavenly movement also. And so the heavenly movement has to do sometimes with the Holy Spirit and angels, holy angels also moving in certain ways. Um, I can only just touch on this, but remember Moses when there was a battle going on and said he lifted up his hands and somebody had to come hold his hands up, his arms up because they, was, they were getting tired. But as long as his arms were up, there was something going on coming in from heaven and I believe it had a lot to do with the ministry of angels. And they were winning the battle as long as they held up Moses' arms. And there was a heavenly movement there. I believe when his arms were lifted up, there was some kind of communication between Moses and the Lord in heaven and also with holy angels of God. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. There was some kind of communication. And uh, sometimes I end up moving my hands and my arms around a lot when I'm worshiping the Lord. There's all kinds of movements. But in Him, we live and move and have our being. I believe that we're going to become more animated the more the heaven comes in, the more the Holy Spirit touches us. We'll be more animated. And we'll be finding ourselves moving in different patterns. Sometimes in a dance, people can move around and get away with it. They can move around in patterns. But sometimes you might end up doing a pattern you're not even really even dancing. You're just moving around in some kind of pattern. Sometimes your arm and your hand might be moving in some sort of a pattern. But when you're in the Spirit, it's going to be connected to angels also moving. If you synchronize with some kind of sound in heaven, if you can synchronize in your spirit with the sound of something you hear, maybe, maybe a pitch or maybe a certain sound that angels making in heaven, a holy angel, then whatever anointing and realm of glory that that angel may be in when that sound is being made, when you harmonize with that angel and harmonize with that sound, then that power and that anointing of God will be transferred from that angel over to you. Praise God. Because you're synchronizing, you're moving with an anointing of God and a sound. Hallelujah. You know, in the book of Genesis, it said in the beginning, when the earth was without form and void, it said the Spirit of God began to come, and the King James says, move across the face of the deep. Well, other translations in the original languages talks about 
that there was sound also. That when God spoke his word, that also there was a sound. There was a sound of heaven that came with his word when he spoke it. And sometimes the Lord might have even sung a melody with his word. There may have been a, a singing and a sound as he spoke his word. But nevertheless, when he spoke his word, there was a sound. I just like to believe that there are music and there are sounds of God in, in heaven. Uh, because I found out there are sounds everywhere and everything God created, there are sounds. If you were able to break an atom down and see the electrons spinning around the atom, I was reading this book by the scientist, it's fascinating to me. He said every atom, because of the electrons spinning around at the speed of light, produce a voice, a certain pitch and a sound. And it's built right into everything God created. Hallelujah. He said, and if these rocks do not praise God, or the people do not praise God, the very rocks will praise God. Because the sound of God is inside everything he created. Hallelujah. But the Holy Spirit moving on the face of the deep is that the sounds of God, the authority and power of God's word, the moving of the Holy Spirit was also creating a sound and a vibration that went over the face of the deep and caused all of the atoms and the molecules to begin to move in harmony with whatever sound the Holy Spirit was releasing with the Word of God. Praise God. And things were being formed and things were being created. I recently watched when I was also in Omaha this couple I was with who watched this video and it was very interesting. They took a metal plate, they hooked a speaker up to it, they put sand on it, and then they begin to release different sounds and it would vibrate the metal plate. And as the sounds were released, the sand began to form into different shapes and patterns. Every time the sound pitch changed, there was a different pattern. The sand kind of came together and formed these different patterns and it shifted with different sounds. Praise God. So every sound, every voice, every language has purpose and destiny in the Lord. There's no language that was created that doesn't have purpose and meaning. And But the Lord is going to be releasing to us more revelation out of His Holy Word about sounds and languages of, that are in heaven, the languages of angels and the sounds in heaven. You know, we were speaking the Spirit that sometimes you're praying you know, in an unknown tongue, but sometimes you might be praying in a language that's in the earth somewhere. And sometimes you might be speaking in the language of an angel in the heavenly realm. Praise God. I know, I remember one time I was in this meeting and the Holy Spirit started having me to sing this unusual sound. I was, I was singing a very unusual tongue. I remember my lips and my tongue felt real weird because I never did that certain sound before. And I never spoken whatever that language was, whatever that tongue was. I never spoken it before. This was the first time. And I remember how awkward my lips and my tongue and everything felt. It's very, very strange to me. But I carried on and I spoke in it and then I got into English. I was like, thank God. But then there was a woman there who had been in Germany for 12 years. And she said to me, she says, I can give you the interpretation of the tongue that you spoke in. She said, you spoke in German, wow. in the dialect of German, in the place where I lived in Germany. Wow. And she began to give me the interpretation of the tongue. And it had to do with calling intercessors together to meet in, to, in Germany to intercede for Europe. Wow. And she, her ministry was called Intercessors International, where she was connected with groups of intercessors in the U.S. and other countries. And about three months from the time that I gave her the prophecies, she said they were planning on calling all these different ministers and pastors and, and intercessors from all over the world into Germany three months from the date that I spoke to her to have a special meeting to intercede for Europe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So then I started thanking and praising and thanking the Lord that our God can speak in any language yes. at any moment. Yes. He can give you a language you've never spoken in before just like that. Yeah. But are you willing to speak in an unknown tongue in public places? Are you willing to look and feel foolish sometimes if God may receive all the praise and glory and honor? Amen. I find that when you feel awkward or feel a little 
strange or feel self-conscious, that you're moving in faith, you're, you're moving into miracle country. Yeah. Every time I've had that feeling of awkwardness, God has done a miracle. <laughs> every time I've felt foolish, mm. almost every time I've seen him come do a miracle. Praise God. I mean, you, want, you want to hear more about the glory of the Lord? Yes. I'm going to just share up-to-date testimony about the glory of the Lord. Some friends of mine invited me to Irving Capel, that's near the airport, Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, for a meeting. This woman has a condominium, this sister. She was in Venezuela, and, but she gave my friends the key and said that they could use her condominium. And so they have meetings there every week on a regular basis. I haven't been there. Matter of fact, that was my first time to ever be at that particular condominium. I, uh, some of my friends were there, but the rest of the people were just new for me. But um, anyway, we went in there, and they were supposed to be taking care of her plants. One of her plants died, and it wasn't a little one. It was one of her big plants, figures, right? One of her big plants just wilted, and it was just like laying over dead. So this is not good, because they were supposed to be taking care of all of her plants and watering and taking care of all that stuff while she was gone. Well, we got into this meeting. We started praising and worshiping the Lord. Holy laughter broke out that that evening where some people were weeping, some people were laughing. I was just staggering all over the place, laughing mostly. I just felt good. Gain with no pain is what I was experiencing. <laughs> and I was just like, man, this is really good. And, and we were just like really getting into the presence of the Lord. The glory of God manifested in that meeting, that visitation so powerfully that, uh, you know, later, this one friend of mine who's a missionary um, was there. His name is James and, and also this other sister named Olga. They travel into other nations. But anyway, they, they pointed to the plant. The glory of God caused that plant to go upright and turn bright green and it was living again. In the course of that meeting, this is what the glory of God did. I have never seen that happen before. And so that just is a testimony to let us know the glory of God has already started manifesting. Now listen, there's much, much more coming. We've only seen the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Praise God. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple that, that sing a song about that too. I forget now. Alberta? Alberta and somebody else. You guys probably know who it is. Yeah, yeah, Kimberly. Alberta and Kimberly, they were singing this song. And part of the song is, you've only seen the tip of the iceberg. Wait until I show you what I have in store for you. Um, but the glory has begun to manifest. Whew. Thank you, Lord. But when I looked at that plant, I thought, if the glory of God brought this plant back to life, made it come back upright and turn bright green, full of life, can you imagine what it's going to be doing to us, the glory of the Lord? How that the glory is going to be deposited in our spirit, man, and how it's going to begin to affect us in our spirit, soul, and body. How that we're being changed, illuminated by the presence of God's glory. Whew. Hallelujah. I still haven't gotten over it. I'm still, I still see that plant. I'm still meditating on it. It is awesome. Um, I, I, somebody sent me a picture. This, this was from the Fiji Islands. Where, and I saw this. There, at the Fiji Islands, there was so much corruption there, so much sin and evil, and people doing drugs, drinking, and all kinds of stuff went on there. The coral reef had died. Yeah. Death was setting into yeah. Fiji Islands. I saw pictures of it where it's just gray and black, ugly looking, the coral reef. The coral reef died. But they had a move of God. They had a great revival. The glory of God began to manifest. I heard that so many people were being delivered and saved, they had to close bars down because people weren't going to the bars, they were coming over to the meetings Amen. and getting the new wine of the Holy Spirit. So who needs the old liquor when we got the new wine of the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. And um, a matter, matter of fact, uh, they had such awesome, powerful, mighty moves of God there as I saw pictures later and the coral reef came back to life again. It'd be the most beautiful shades of pink and red, and some of it would be blue or purple. And all the coral reef came back to life again from the glory of the Lord. The whole island 
was transformed by the glory of God. People were transformed by the glory of God. And so many people were delivered and saved and brought into the kingdom and were filled with the Holy Spirit. People were running around all over the island talking about, you should have seen God do this, you should have seen God do that. And, and everybody was talking about the Lord. Whew. Listen, but that was only the tip of the iceberg for what God has in store for us. When he says the glory of the latter house should be much, much greater than the glory of the former house. Some of you are going to just start gazing and you're going to start seeing heaven manifest right before your very eyes. Um, you, you don't know when this, where this is going to happen, but it's going to start happening right now. It's been happening to me. And then, so you'll be maybe in an IHOP or a Denny's. You may be at home and you may be in somebody else's house. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, people will be talking about the Lord. You still feel the anointing. Another thing that the glory is doing. This is another thing that's happening. The Lord is causing the fellowship to become more holy and more anointed than ever before. Amen. When we get together in fellowship, it's off the chart. I mean the presence of God and the Holy Spirit, the anointing, the joy, the excitement. The glory, the ecstasy, the presence of God in the heavens is manifesting more and more right in the glory. Right in fellowship. Fellowship is not anything like it was before. It's being changed. It's becoming more heavenly in nature. And more of Jesus is manifesting himself. More of the heavens are there. More of heavenly experiences are there. And I'm going to just share a little testimony. Of, uh, one of the places I go to is up in Arlington and it's near Six Flags. It's, it's called Rehobo Family Fellowship. And it's, it's a church family that meets in one of those office complexes, you know. I've been friends with them for seven years or something. And they had me come in there quite a bit. And so we have these awesome meetings there. Jeremy is this brother that plays a keyboard, and he doesn't play. He just, he, he just flows, and the glory just comes in. He's just anointed on that keyboard. When you're anointed on something, people are not going to be able to improve upon it. Right. Praise God. Right. Whatever you're anointed to do, it's, you're going to be able to excel in it. And no one's going to be able to improve upon what God has anointed you to move in. Whatever that is. Yeah. The anointing brings excellence. Yeah. A spirit of excellence and perfection. It brings the nature of God in the heavens. But anyway, a bunch of my friends, we like to get together about midnight, 11.30 or midnight, and go to IHOP and for another meeting. So we all meet together at this IHOP. And so we got... We became friends with the managers because things happen there. When a bunch of us get together and people are being drawn in there and, and all kinds of things are going on, um, sometimes we just start praising worship. We have our own little section of IHOP we've taken over. And we'll start praising worshiping God in there and just have more prophecies, more visions, and more of everything. One night when I was in the spirit there, I looked over and I saw this police woman. She was like a couple of tables over. And you could see she'd been working for hours. She'd been doing her paperwork. She was getting ready to leave. She, you know, had a meal and everything. But she couldn't leave. She kept on getting her paper together, and she was thinking about leaving. And then all of a sudden, she'd just sit back down again. But she was listening to everything we were all talking about. And she was feeling the overflow of the anointing of the Holy Spirit was moving right on through IHOP. Glory to God. Then there's a sister named Melissa. I've known her for some years. She's an intercessor. She was there. She uh, used to be in Ireland. She was involved in ministry there in Ireland. She was married before her husband died. But anyway, she had back injuries from auto accidents. And she, she, she's, um, so what happened is one of the waiters accidentally was picking up dishes and dropped some dishes on her back oh, no. when she was leaned over eating, you know. And so she started having all this pain. So some people asked me if I would go over there and pray for her. I said, sure, why not? We're, we're, we're in church, aren't we? <laughs> well, I mean, the church is in IHOP, and we're in a service because we are the church. Right. And so I said, okay, I'm going to go right over there right now, lay hands on her and pray for her. So I did, and we started praising and worshiping the Lord and started having prophecies. On about 3.45 or 4 o'clock in the morning, Melissa was going to get up and leave. And so she starts getting up, and she starts walking uh, right behind me and then all of a sudden she just stood there you want to hear something really cool she went into a trance for about 20 minutes it was frozen but she was smiling and she could talk a little bit she said she felt a hand on her back 
And she said she knew it was an angel. Nobody else was behind her. But she was just standing there, and she just looked so happy, and she was smiling from ear to ear. Praise God. And she said when she felt the hand moving around, she said pain was leaving her back. Amen. And in the course of that 20 minutes, her back was being totally healed. And she was just so happy and just smiling and just, just, whew. it was amazing just to look at her. And she was glowing. It's like this light of God's glory was all over her face. Whew. And then during that time, we'd just break out and just start praising, worshiping the Lord and among us and just continue ministering. And, but before it was over, Melissa said she moved all around and said her back was totally healed. Praise God. Wow. I, I was in another meeting in a place called Burleson, which is south of Fort Worth, about 15 or 20 miles. And um, this is just, just weeks ago. Melissa has a prophetic ministry, and the Lord told me to call up her and this other brother, this Jewish brother named Bob, to call him up and sort of like have him come do some ministry with me, you know, sort of like encourage him, make a little space for him. So I get Melissa up there and I ask her to pray. Detailed visions of things in people's lives, and people are just being nodding every word. Wow. She was speaking, they're just nodding. Mm -hmm. And people are being touched and had tears of joy just all running out of their eyes. <laughs> and um, she stuck around that day. We had a lunch after the meeting, it was like a morning meeting, it turned into an afternoon meeting. Eventually, we all well, had this lunch. People came in there, we're having this lunch, and we're all continuing to praise the Lord to prophesy, to share visions with each other all through the lunch. And it was an awesome, awesome time. <laughs> and the Lord spoke to me through some total strangers that were visiting that day and spoke some very, very direct things to me that I'd been asking God about. Just spoke them to me right before they were walking out the door. I said, thank you, Lord. Wow, he is so good. Amen. And I've been asking the Lord, the Lord, I've got to hear from you on some things. I've got to hear from you. But the Lord desires to speak a lot through the family of God. Yeah. He doesn't want us to be self-sufficient. Right. I hear him and tell me a lot of things. I see a lot of visions. But some things he wants to speak to me through my brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. Because he wants us to be interconnected together and not be self-sufficient. So, um, it was an awesome time. And so, Melissa, the Lord told me to spend some time with her. And she wanted me to mentor her. People have been asking me to mentor them. So, uh, we were in the spirit. We were talking about the things of God after lunch. The people I was with, you know, they were there with us. And so we just stayed there talking about the things of God all day long. And then at some point, Melissa started sharing. She said when she was two years old, she fell out of a chair and her head hit the concrete. When she was two years old, she had brain damage. And she grew up with brain damage. Now she's mid-30s, I'm just guessing. She has this brain damage. And so for her to read a page, she said it usually takes her about an hour because she has to turn letters around and words. Letters and words are flipped around and words are missing when she tries to read them. They'll, they'll just be missing out of the sentence. So she said to turn all these letters around and turn words around and try to find the words that are missing it takes her about an hour to read one page in the book. But Melissa is determined. Praise God. But she was telling me about what happened to her. The Holy Spirit came on me and began to remind me about the glory of God. And reminded me of some things. He spoke to me in Baltimore, Maryland about how he was going to be creating new neural pathways to heal damaged neural pathways in the brain. Praise God. So when we were in the Spirit and the glory of God was falling in the place where we were, I looked into her eyes when she was sharing with me what happened to her, uh, and I told her about the revelation about the neural pathways and the glory. I saw faith and love in her eyes in the Lord. She was in the Spirit. I saw the faith in her eyes. I said, Phew. I said, Melissa, I see you're in the Spirit right now. She said, well, would you pray for me to be healed? And I said, I'll do it right now. And we'll just stand up because... The Holy Spirit told me to speak 
and begin to decree about new neural pathways that will be created and God with glory will come touch you right now and the Lord will create some new neural pathways in your brain to replace the ones that were damaged when you were two years old and He will heal your mind and heal you. Praise God. Amen. But when I looked at her, as I said, I saw she was in full faith in her eyes and she was in the Spirit. And I was in faith to, to share everything with her and she was in, in faith to receive. I was in faith to give forth. So we stood up. And when I prayed for her, I felt the anointing flow into me and out of me. I could feel the strength of the Lord like virtue. And went right into her body. And she just kind of shook a little bit. But she said she felt the miracle and the healing come right into her head and right into her body. Hallelujah. Amen. And then so... Uh, so we sat down and continued fellowshipping in the things of God and sharing the Word of God and the Spirit of the Lord. Um, <clears throat> and then I, I, I was back home in San Antonio. I got an email. It's from Melissa. She said, <clears throat> this is like a day or two later, she, she says that her mind is working normally now for the first time in her life. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. And she said she no longer has to reverse letters or words or has missing words when she tries to read or speak. She said everything is there. But she said she has to get used to it because it's overwhelming because she's never felt that way before. She's never thought that way before. But she said she was happy. Amen. Another thing was is that while the glory was there touching us, listen to this, she said that she had nerve damage on the side of her face and so when she smiled one side of her face was numb with nerve damage and she thought about asking for prayer while prayer was going on for the neural pathways but she just she, she just didn't pray about that I guess because she was thinking about this major problem with her brain but she said the Lord healed that also and it, her, her side of her face was no longer numb her nerves were healed and she was learning to strengthen those muscles now and able to smile with a full smile because she didn't smile, a smile fully on one side. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The glory of God has already started manifesting. A friend of mine, a couple I know for some couple of years, she was in a meeting and, and the glory was falling and, and this... Um, she was told to go over and stand next to these people and they were to look at her hair. Her hair was white. And they were to ask her what color she wanted her hair to be. What was her original color? She said black. And they were to look at her hair and decree that her hair color was going to change. And they were to make this decree for 15 minutes they would stare at her hair. You know that I was invited to come to their house for a meeting just a few weeks ago when I walked in the door. Most of her hair was black. And you had just a little bit of white hair here and there. But most of her hair had turned black in 15 minutes as the glory was touching her. As there were groups of people, the saints, making a decree for her hair color to change back to normal. They asked her what, what color that was. And then they began to think about that. And they begin to decree, pray in the Spirit for 15 minutes while they looked at her hair. And her hair color changed. That's the glory of the Lord. Amen. The glory of God will transform us. Moses was transformed by the glory of God when he was with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights. This natural vision was not bend. His natural strength was not diminished or decreased all the rest of the days of his life from the time that he was in the presence of God for 40 days and 40 nights, at the age of 80 to the age of 120, for the next 40 years, he moved with new health in the anointing of God. When I picture Moses, I don't see an old man full of wrinkles with a beard about three feet long, but I see a man who's glowing with the glory of God, who looks younger than his time, younger than his days. Praise God. Now, it's important what you think, because as a man thinketh, so is he. That's what you become, what you think, and what you believe. Amen. 
I just believe in advanced stages of youngness. That's why I'm going to bypass old age. Because of the Spirit, the same Spirit that raised the Lord Christ Jesus from the dead can come quick in these mortal physical bodies. Our God can give us a new part of it where it's out. And the resurrection power of God and the glory can cause your body to be renewed. If something dies inside, the Lord can resurrect it back to life again. And put new life inside of it. Amen. I've had the Lord put a lot of new things in me in the last several years of my life. Praise God. The devil's tried to kill me several times. But God keeps bringing, bringing me back again. It's pretty hard to kill somebody that has resurrection life That's in them. Right. Glory to God. But the devil's tried real hard um, to kill me on several occasions. But God just keeps bringing me back. Hallelujah. And I know that I'm just getting started. I know the best part of my life is just now at the door. And I know that the ministry in the greater realm of authority, greater anointing, greater power, greater glory, greater healing, greater miracles, greater everything, greater Jesus is right at the door. Yes. Amen. And by God's grace, I know that everything has been a preparation into that realm of the greater right. glory. You remember what the archangel says to Daniel? says, O oh, thou, Daniel, those who know their God in those last days shall wax strong and do exploits in the name of the Lord. How many of you are going to be waxing strong and do exploits in the name of the Lord? Yes. Amen. How can you do greater works? Because there's a greater one in you, yes. the Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the whole world. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yes. He's going to come forth in a greater way as more of the glory of God has been released. And He will begin to release His greater works that He's already created before the foundation of the world. And you will simply enter into it with Him. Glory to God. Whew. A greater day, greater power, greater faith, greater glory, greater anointing. The glory of the latter house shall be exceedingly greater than the glory of the former house. And those days are already here. Now the fullness of that time is still coming. But we're going to be doing good just to handle the glory that God is going to begin to manifest now. Because it's going to take time to adapt to changes. Because they are so strong, they are so pure, they are so holy, they are so all-consuming that God will have to supernaturally help us adjust to the glory of God. Hallelujah. People don't just waltz into the glory of God. Remember when Moses told the children of Israel? Moses was talking to God and God said, told him, talk to the children of Israel. He said, tell the children of Israel, prepare for three days, for in three days I'm going to reveal my glory. What was the first thing that happened? The angel releases a shrill, piercing sound through his trumpets. Piercing. You probably could have heard it many, many, many miles away. No telling how far you could, you could have heard the sound. But there began to be a great earthquake in the heavens and the earth. The whole earth and the mountain began to shake. There were thunders and lightning, <coughs> flashes of lightning and glory were re being released all over the top of Mount Sinai. And this was just the beginning of the glory of the Lord. The glory, the beginning of God's glory brings great shaking. The Lord said He would shake the heavens and the earth. And the glory of God is going to bring awesome shaking. This is the first part of the glory of the Lord. And the glory of God is going to get our attention. This is that very strong angel making strong sound, <sighs> piercing sound. God knows how to get our attention. But the glory of God is going to shake everything that can be shaken. And then the Lord has to prepare us for the glory. Remember when Moses was in Mount Sinai and he stood there for six days and six nights? While the Holy Spirit was preparing him, he was just gazing, standing there gazing day and night for six days and nights at the glory cloud of God. He could see it from a distance. On the seventh day, the voice comes out of the cloud, comes over, and God speaks to Moses. Moses, come into the glory with the Lord. And he stepped into the glory cloud. 